Fernando Alonso was big in cycling, but now less because he had a pretty bad injury a couple of years ago. He broke his jaw on a road bike Oof. in off season. So now he kind of stepped back a bit from, from bikes. G'day legends and welcome back to the Press Room Podcast presented by Zwift Legends. Episode 101. We had the 100th last week and thanks to everyone who listened to the Nino Sherda episode and all the feedback. But we move on. we got to chase the 200th. And by the way, the Mount Bike World Cup has just begun in Brazil. So catch that on YouTube or the internet uh, if you're interested. But we move on because it's time for our guest today. For 101, we've got Valtteri Bottas and Tiffany Cromwell, the duo, the power couple in sport uh, for these day and ages, aren't they? And uh, I tell you what, this episode, long time coming. It was meant to happen uh, back in January in the Hilton. And I know you guys know that I love the Hilton. I'm just sort of putting the coins in the rack for next year's uh, next year's race. Maybe I can get a bed in there, who knows? Or part of the buffet even. But anyway, uh, long time coming this episode with Valtteri and Tiff. And a big shout out to Ryan, who uh, was a big force in putting this one together. But Valtteri and Tiff and I all met. We met Tiff before many times, but as a duo, Valtteri and Tiff, we met in Adelaide back at Rattle Gravel, um, which was really cool. Uh, They obviously raced it and they sort of launched uh, this event uh, during the Tour Down Under Festival. And Rattle Gravel, if you didn't know already, is a sister event to Finland Gravel, which of course is sort of uh, Valtteri's sort of arm uh, of the series and uh, what we talk about in the first half of this podcast. But it also is a sister event to Steamboat Gravel in the US. Now Valtteri and Tiff sort of co-own this series with uh, a lady called Amy, an amazing legend over in the US. And that Steamboat Gravel, let me tell you, that was the OG that was the OG uh, gravel race in the US back in like 2014, I remember it going and reading stuff about it. So now all of these three events kind of form a bit of a package um, and they just do it differently. The event village is just done. It's just really cool. They do a pro panel the night before. The whole race and the whole event and participation is really cool. So it was uh, really nice to catch up with Valtteri and Tiff. We chat about the Finland gravel event. So for you European listeners, you've got a chance to enter because it is coming up. And we talk about the dates and um, the courses and just kind of the event village set up, which has saunas in, by the way, which, you know, that's kind of strange for us here in Australia. Uh, saunas uh, at a gravel race Um, in Adelaide we had ice baths uh, after at rattle so pretty crazy and then legends once we finish talking about Finland gravel I ask uh, Valtteri and Tiff a couple of questions a little bit of the Q&A and we talk about some of the F1 drivers who might be getting into riding or used to and who Valtteri would invite on a gravel ride we talk about the grid walk and, you know, what's going on with Valtteri, or sorry, Tiffany's, um, you know, her whole outfit. You know, it's a big thing now, Formula One, is the grid walk. You know, all the riders, or all the drivers and their, their partners dress up. And I wanted to know, what you know, what kind of what kind of brain trust comes together to the thing of the cool outfits that Tiffany puts on show and, and same with Valtteri and, and all the dress up that goes on. And we also hear about Tiffany's sort of pursuit of all the QOMs around the F1 tracks. Uh, and you hear a little bit about that. It's pretty cool. I think you guys will enjoy. And then just a quick fire Q&A at the end that uh, you know, should find pretty interesting. So I hope you guys enjoy this episode of Valtteri and Tiff. Before we get into that one, we have to say thank you to Zwift, the title sponsor of the Press Room Cycling Podcast. We love Zwift. The Kicker Core Zwift Hub 1, check it out. It now is for sale in Australia and, of course, everywhere else in the world. If you need a trainer, you have to buy this one. It's the only one to buy. You can get it with Zwift subscription as well. And I think now there's a really cool workout plan called the Spring Training Workout, specifically for, I guess, Europeans coming out of winter into summer. But for you Oceania people... 
You want to keep that summer fitness ticking along into winter before the road races start and the gravel season begins. So get on there, try the six-week plan, and just keep your summer fitness ticking over. And finally, legends. Well, actually not finally. One more. We've got the IGP Sport. I told you about this last week. Go check it out, igpsport.com.au. Look at the IGS 630 cycling computer. The battery life runs forever. Use TR-20 for 20% off. It's around $200. And let me tell you, it was so good, I lost my Wahoo Bolt in the process because I just never used it because of this IGS 630. It's amazing. Uh, Send me a message if you want to know anything about it because um, I've used it longer than anyone else. And last one, I actually got sent. This is really cool. People are sending me things now. Camelback. Or C to Summit, excuse me. C to Summit had sent me the new Camelback Podium Insulated Stainless Steel Bottle. So we all know the Camelback bottles. They have that real sort of distinctive closing lid at the top, which is really cool. You can kind of sort of twist it close. But now they make that bottle in a insulated stainless steel style, um, which is all the rage uh, right now. I don't have one of those bottles, you know, that everyone walks around with. But now I've got this one. Pretty cool. And I can just give you a little sound check. Not bad, olive green, and the sort of big deal with this thing here is it keeps your drink or your fluid cold for 18 hours, holy moly, or 14 hours. That's still pretty crazy. So uh, really good for summertime. That's actually gonna be perfect for a hot gravel race. You're trying to keep your uh, your fluids nice and cool to keep yourself uh, you know hydrated and your body temp low. Check them out. They've got some really good colours. And if you're sort of about the environment as well, we all know that the regular cycling bottles do have a shelf life once you sort of cook them and they get a bit mouldy or you've used them 50 times. So maybe this is the way forward. Super cool. Check them out on their website. They're brand new. All right, legends. It's time to get stuck into this episode. Thank you so much for listening. We've got Valtteri Bottas and Tiffany Cromwell. We'll see you on the other side. Alfred, did you watch the race last night? Uh, I was there, actually. Oh, were you? Where were you yeah. situated? <laughs> I was um, in a couple of feed zones. Really? Yeah. Really? Okay, yeah. so you are doing the feeding. Yeah. yeah. Mm. yeah. Is it Middle of the pack and getting wet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, especially at the end there. Is there an art yeah. to it or is it easier than it looks? Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Like, just hand the bottle out. Yeah, just don't hold it too tight. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. And don't know, how, yeah. There are definitely people who don't know how to do it. Or there's like, you know, if they hold onto it too much and then you can't really grab it or, yeah. Mm. Okay. What's, Tiffany, what's the, uh, what do you feel like eating after you finish a race like that? Easter eggs. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, immediately after, yeah. Often I don't want to eat anything just because I think you've had that many gels and, and stuff like that, like your stomach's just, no, I don't want anything more, especially nothing more sweet. But um, in the evening, normally something dirty, like a good pizza or or burger or something like that. Amen. It's a great intro uh, last night to Flanders to what we're going to talk about today mostly, uh, which is gravel cycling, which is something that's very, no, something that I certainly love and a lot of the listeners love as well. You both are involved with a lot of racing, um, well, gravel racing, a couple of races now. We're here to talk about Finland gravel. Can you guys, or maybe start, if, if you can explain just how you got into gravel cycling, because it started quite young for you, is that right? Um, I wouldn't say young, but I came in the earlier gravel trend. Because basically, if we wind back to 2019, um, I was heading over to America for Tour of Colorado, and that was the first year of SPT gravel, and mm. the team because Canyon was a major sponsor, team asked myself and Ella, my teammate, to race this event. Like, we had no idea what it was, but it was like, sure, no worries. But the key was, it was like, we're not allowed to do it seriously. It was there just to have fun, to keep the sponsors happy, and the main importance was Tour of Colorado. Right. So I went there, and, you know, because I went out early for Attitude, and it was great. I loved it. It was super fun, but thought nothing more of us. Like, okay, it was just a one-off thing, and and off we go back to the road. And then it was at the end of 2020 when I was renegotiating my contract, Ronnie, my team, team manager, kind of proposed the idea because there was a period there where I was asking to do like mountain biking 
or always ask me to do something else because when you've been in the sport for a long time you at least for me I like to have these new challenges and different mm. things he didn't really give me the mountain biking opportunity but so then obviously he saw gravel I was like oh maybe that could be a good thing that I could do and proposed that idea because at the time it was just starting to take off a bit more and um he saw that the sponsors also liked that area and to have one rider racing both on road and in the gravel discipline he could see the value in that too and for me he could see the value of having something different to challenge myself with in parallel with the road so everything kind of lined up and yeah kind of just went from there mm. and what about you Valtteri how did you start riding on the off-road um yeah i would say yeah but definitely after, after tiff like i did always a little bit of um some hardtail mountain biking when i was back in finland um, oh, yeah. as a teenager as a kid when i lived there but uh then pretty much everything was road riding when it came mm. to cycling after and especially when i moved here to to monaco the mountain biking is um is a bit too technical and rocky so it was all about just yeah road bikes um but yeah tiff actually introduced me to me to it so i did see the the race um she did in in 2019 i remember she was telling me about it and looked pretty cool and then yeah. yeah gave it a go in spt as well for the first time in um 2020 yeah. 20 or 21 20, 20 is COVID, there wasn't a year okay yeah yeah 2021 yeah i did this uh the short cord course in spt which was like uh 60 kilometers and mm. had fun and um, I, yeah, even though it's the shorter distance, but still, I was quite excited that I finished on the podium in my age group, and I was like, "Wow, it's like actually <laughs> really, really cool." And uh, had the first experience of uh, purple, like gravel event. What it's all about, and it's not just not just about the ride itself. It's all about you know, having fun as well. And a few beers after. Yeah, he was sold as soon as he heard about the beer. Yeah, oh, yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah that, i mean that, that, that's it and then obviously gravel bike technology at the same time started to ramp up pretty quickly they started to be proper gra gravel bikes proper gravel tires so you wouldn't always mm. suffer with bumps and stuff so yeah just jumped on the train really and been loving it mm. yeah gravel stuff is great in that especially from like a an event point of view because before say gravel events were a thing it was more about those big fondos and those you know the big participation events and they are really good for for people to to go for a challenge trying to do the longest distance or you know try and do the fastest time they can but the and same for different to racing as well the gravel cycling offers that awesome feeling of even if you're on your own it's still really fun because you're in the outdoors often beautiful terrain you still have to sort of think because, you know, which line you're taking or you can still have fun even if you're, you're in the box versus on the road. Sometimes that's not so good when you're on your own uh, on a tough circuit, hey? Yeah, definitely. And no yeah, no skidding on the road. Really. So at least on a gravel bike, you can play around a bit. You know, you can even have some, you know, little jumps and stuff like that. So I like mm -hmm. that aspect of it. And and yeah, like, like you said, that feeling of being out there typically without any cars around it's yeah it's awesome. mm. now we obviously had rattle gravel in adelaide uh during tdu which was great fun and such a cool event especially from my, my perspective I've, I've seen well i've, I've participated in, in, and worked on all the events in australia for gravel so far but there was none that really had the energy like uh like rattle did with the with the um pro panel the night before which was a lot of fun and certainly different um really enjoyed that and of course in finland we've got the finland gravel now that's is this the third year of that event second second year okay so last year was the first event uh can you tell us about the the course valtry and and obviously in being in finland i imagine that you'd have something to do with the course design and outlook there's uh, yeah, th there's three different courses. The longest one is 177k. Yeah. Um, last year for the first edition, the mid course was 77k, but it is actually going to be a bit longer this year. So it's going to be around 115, 120. And then there's a short course which is about 40, 50k oh, for nice. people who just want to get out there and and even challenge themselves or have a bit of a taste of, of gravel. Mm. But the course is is awesome. 
Finland offers lots of gravel roads, lots of different kind of gravel roads. Um, the start and finish of the, the the first 10K and the last 10K is on these cross-country skiing pads. So oh, it's sure. quite like falling fast, a bit more narrow, but yeah, super flowy. And then, yeah, you've got a mixture of um, yeah, riding you know through the forest um, in, nice. in uh, gravel roads and then some, some bigger, bigger gravel roads, but everything is pretty fast, pretty hard packed. Mm. But uh, yeah, I mean, I've actually yeah, I only got to ride proper gravel in Finland also in when I got my first gravel bike basically because when yeah. I had a road bike on to bike, I would do different kind of paths. So it's also I've been still exploring so many new new roads in my whole time. Yeah, sweet. Yeah, it looks awesome. Um, June is it June fifteenth? Isn't it first right, first yeah. event? You beauty. Yeah, that's cool. I think it's good that you added the extra diff distance and you organized that the extra distance, especially. Having that 40k distance, that's great because that's like your perfect taster, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Like a... even my dad signed up yeah. for that. Oh, time. sweet. Yeah. Yeah. And e bikes can ride, ride that one as well. So we we try to make it as accessible as possible and for as many different people as possible. Like this, this thing with our events, we always want to make sure everyone's welcome and there's something for everybody. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's a good balance of trying to get. Um, well, I guess trying to get your, your participation, your first time beginner riders, but then also you're also offering that 177K, um, which is really good for those who are wanting to test themselves. And um, yeah. like last year you had, I think in the men's, Tom Squinge won the race. He was there. And then Tiffy won the women's, which is cool. And I wondered this year, is there any any new additions to that pro field that might be coming along? Yeah, we've got Greg Van Avermaet has signed up, which is pretty awesome. Oh, cool. You know, he's yeah. Olympic champion in Rio and obviously pretty amazing classics rider as well. And he just retired, was it last year, I think? So yeah. he's now kind of dabbling in the gravel field. And we also have Andre Greipel, the gorilla. Oh, cool. Yeah. Another retired ex-pro. He was obviously one of the best sprinters of his time. So there's some of the, mm. the names of like from – the rope. I think Tom would like to come back. It just depends on his road schedule. Yeah. This is always the biggest challenge, even on the women's side, like trying because it's in a busy period. It's in the time yeah. when people are up for the tour or for the women. It's Tour of Swiss that weekend. Um, and then on the gravel side, to be honest, we haven't seen what the actual list is yet, but mm. there's definitely some of the top gravel riders coming back as well. Like that's the thing. We offer equal prize money. I think mm. it's 20,000 euros. Oh, split evenly men and women so yeah, wow. yeah so we want to so hopefully then that brings the good fields as well and you know we want to make it also the premier not profit but yeah like professional field as well that that's the one that everybody wants to come to and mm -hmm. last year we were only one week after unbound so i think that was slightly challenging you know for people to do the double yeah, um, nice, yeah. but this year we're two weeks after so hopefully that will bring a few more of the pros up to finland and they can also enjoy because yeah, it is. It's such, it really was such a fast course. Like, yeah, for 177, we, I can't remember what the distance, the time was, but, you know, we were around 35K average type thing. So, yeah. Fine. Yeah. Cool. Like a roller okay. coaster. Yeah. <laughs> super fun. Wow. Epic. Is there, is there any like Finnish traditions or drinks or delicacies or something that you're going to have at the event that you had last year? Uh, uh, sauna. Yeah, we have like, yeah, that's the because it's it's like um this we've changed a little bit the the start and finish location. It's right. going to be at Harbor of Lahti now, where we actually last year we had the podium and the start, but not the finish. Right. So now at the, at the start and and at the finish we we will have saunas and like hot, tub. hot tubs and stuff like that. And it, it is by the lake anyway, so people are going to have a swim. Um, there are, yeah, yeah, there's going to be beverages, of course. And yeah. stuff like that. There's yep. this Finnish long drink called Longkaro, which is quite famous, which they, oh. it was made for the Helsinki Olympics and it's now like a staple in Finnish culture. So we like to bring, yeah, the Finnish touches to it. And yeah. oh, and right, it's man. right before the midsummer as well. So you're getting into the period where it is almost 24 hours of daylight. So it's, yeah, you have the energy. And if we get as good a weather as last year, then that's what bring the people out and live band and just, you know, it's all about when you finish, be able to tell the stories and have a great time. And the, the fact that we have the finish party there and the finish line will be there, it means we can welcome in everybody right through until the last rider. Yeah, it's a bit mm -hmm. like in Rattle, you know, people can just hang out there yeah. and uh, 
you know, mm. wait for them and have a good time. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. The after um the after party in the village area is 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 awesome. And and Rattles yeah. was one of the best I'd seen. I've actually I sent some pictures to um to the organ Brendan Rebecca at seven um so they could get a feel for it because I was like you must see this setup it was it was really cool um I was just what was the name of that beer you said oh it's, no um, long crow I can maybe type it on the chat but it's, it's called original long drink um uh, original but it's not a beer it's like a gin and grapefruit oh yeah okay now they have lots of flavors, but the original one is the grapefruit flavor. See, it's what you have when you have it after a sauna and stuff like this. It's yeah. I'll enjoy, oh, original long drink, right? And and you have sauna, so is it cold? Because I don't know. I'm, oh yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So it's in a can, and yeah, it's quite refreshing. Sweet. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I really like that. Uh, now. And so, yeah, June June 15th, if I remember. So uh, there is quite a few European listeners, so let's hope they jump on. That would be really cool. You can enter, you can enter now until a couple of days before. So definitely check that out um, and look at their socials too. That's really well well done, the Finland Gravel socials, all of them actually. Now, uh, with regards to gravel riding, we spoke about before just how, you know, just how nice it is and, and there's the list of benefits. But I wanted to know for each of your sort of career, say, so for example, TF, your real road cycling career, and Valtteri, of course, your F1 driving. What is gravel, what's one sort of positive thing that gravel riding has done um, for your careers, whether it's like a, a mental offset or, you know, an extra challenge, something like that? Yeah, for me personally, it's definitely just... What's the best way to describe it? Like a nice release from the pressures of the world tour. Like, you know, the level now in women's cycling is so high. And it's like every race you have to be on every race. It's like, which I like, I like the challenges, but you know, it's, mm. it's hard. And when I first went to gravel, it was about, I was there more for the sponsors than the racing. So it was just enjoying. Now it's changing and it is more about the racing, but because on the road, I'm more often just a support rider mm -hmm. for my teammates, which is fine. And I enjoy it, but when I go to gravel, it's like I have the opportunity to try and win again. And it's like mm. getting those feelings again, which I haven't had for a number of years. It's, it's nice. Like, you know, I'm thinking about myself, remembering the, the tactics you need and like work out how to actually win the race. And obviously I've had a bit of success in the last mm. year. And yeah, I think that's been kind of nice and kind of then that gives me the motivation to just keep pushing. And then I go back to the road and I'm fresh and ready to like give it all to my team again. Mm. Okay. What about you, Valtteri? For me, it's it's quite a nice balancing factor because yeah, obviously Formula One is also pretty pretty serious sport, pretty pretty hectic, yeah. um, lots of people around, lots of noise. And for me, yeah, gravel riding is the opposite. Like yeah, there's no not much noise. Usually on the on the roads, there's less people. Um, yeah, you can be on your own in with your own thoughts. Um, it's just a different kind of challenge. Um, and, and and same with the events. It just uh, really takes my mind off from my day job, let's say, and mm. obviously keeps me fit as well at the same time. And uh, I can earn my beers quite easily on the bike, so uh, <laughs> that's nice. But um, yeah, for me, it's really really a balancing factor and mm. fitness. Mm. Okay, cool. Who, who on the current F one grid, Valtteri, is most likely to join you on a gravel ride? Most likely would be probably Lance Stroll. I know he does a bit of riding. He does some mountain biking. Oh, okay. He would probably most likely. Fernando Alonso was big in cycling, but now less because he had a pretty bad injury a couple of years ago. He broke his jaw on a road bike. Oh. In off season, so now he kind of stepped back a bit from from bikes. But yes, yeah. Probably Lance Stroll. Um, I've heard Carlos Sainz. He started riding a bit more recently on the road. I, I saw some pictures. Yeah, in Melbourne. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's yeah. cool. Now, when we were Rand in Seb Vettel as a retiree, he was always riding. Yeah, Vettel would be really. He likes we, should, we should invite him to Finland. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> that would be cool. That would be Save cool. Save the corner. Actually, yeah. I'll send him in yeah. right away. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Now, I remember this from uh, the pro panel at Rattle. Uh, Valtteri, you mentioned that Tiff, you've got some KOM or QOMs around some of the tracks for running. 
Now, I wonder, <laughs> I, I wondered, is there a track that's on your list this year that you might, you'd, or, or any time that you'd love to get the QOM for? To be fair, I only wonder because his strategist, his former strategist, she was always doing it. So I was like, ah, and always posting about it. Like, she's great, but always posts like, ah, I just want to get the crap just to be yeah. annoying. <laughs> but um, <laughs> what would be a good one? Austin could be a good one. It's a hard track. Because mm. it's literally my off-season training. So I would mm. be doing like one easy run a week and then I would just kill myself with one completely flat out, which <laughs> isn't always the best strategy, but it was something to do when I wasn't riding my bike. So Mexico, I nearly died because it was um, altitude. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I went man. like full gas and they're like, oh, man, I'm not going to make it. But, yeah, I don't know. What, what's another good one? Monza, it's nice and flat. Yeah. Oh yeah, but needs to be season. Yeah, yeah. Like typically, I wouldn't do it in season, but yeah, yeah, that's true. So yeah. other than Vegas, Vegas, I wanted, but then we oh. couldn't use the track. Yeah, most Vegas of the time. would be a good one. Yeah, mm. yeah. The challenging thing was because it was only closed for a certain time. It's not like typical tracks where you have. Yeah. Well, maybe Monaco could be a good one because the home oh, one. That would be. But cool. That's a hard one. Yeah, or mm. if they ever brought back Adelaide, then you could go yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, sure. that would be cool. Yeah. Now, one more F1 related question. One thing I love about the sport is like just the pictures of all like the drivers and partners walking into the race. And I've seen some cool photos of you guys strolling in together when you when you're together for one of the races. I want to know about the outfits. Is there like a full planning thing to get the outfit set because you know tiff you've always got the best kit on and sometimes Valtteri you're just wearing the standard team kit which is good and sometimes costumes but i wondered maybe on your side tiff is there like a full team sort of putting these outfits together full team of one yeah <laughs> it's really? me. So, yeah yeah <laughs> but i put a lot of thought into it of course like you know i it's yeah like i've always enjoyed fashion and you know i did study it when i finished school and like i'm not oh, saying cool. i'm the most stylish person out there but it's always fun kind of piecing it together but I do ask Valtteri quite often for his opinion when I'm packing my clothes like does this work does that work yeah it's kind of it's nice because you know I spend so much time living in track suits and stuff like that at bike races where you don't really care how you look so then it's kind yeah. of like it's kind of fun piecing it together and being like all right what do we got what am I feeling always have some backups but no I don't have a stylist team it's just me <laughs> trying to it out to come up with something that's going to be nice okay yeah, and it's cool all right oh. there i actually wear the same stuff yeah the track just a team team shirt my favorite shorts favorite yeah. shoes yeah. Easy. on the rare occasion we mix it up like yeah. captain america t-shirt when yeah. it was coming up from vacay or if we do some merch then you'll wear that or on the rare but only on a thursday you really mix it yeah. up Mm, mm, these yeah. days becoming a proper runway even for the drivers like everybody i feel like is coming up with yeah, something yeah and first place it has become a bit of a thing for many drivers they obviously for some it's promoting for their sponsors you know if they have a clothing mm. brand sponsor and stuff like that so that's part of mm, it you know? yeah very well like showing off their own stuff that they're selling yeah well lewis with all of this although joe it's between joe and lewis for the full fashion runway of like lewis is definitely level. yeah yeah, but his teammates too, because he he loves fashion as well. Like some of his stuff is quite yes. out there. <laughs> That's cool. And you design some of the do you to do the designs of the t-shirts and stuff that you guys wear sometimes? Like there was the taco one when you went to yeah, his he, personal and the sausage sizzle one. In yeah. Oh yes, yeah, and you can buy them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. sick. Okay. How how yeah. do people buy our team like uh, online? Yeah. Online shop. Just the challenging thing for Australia is just the shipping costs is a bit painful, oh, yeah. but we can't get around that, unfortunately. Just makes it more rare if you get one over here. Yeah. 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 Okay. Now, quick fire ones, right? Gravel related. Uh, which ones of these would you prefer? Climbs or single track? Single track. Single track. Oh, okay. Sand or mud? <laughs> mud. Sand. <laughs> Assuming it's like a 500, a 100 meter section. Uh, but, but not unbound mud. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, let's hope that's not there this time. Uh, yeah. Gels or bars? Bars. Gels. Do you guys see that uh, Flandern gel? It was like gravy and chips or something. It was like that was the flavor. Something. Oh, like yeah? That. Yeah. yeah. Or, 
it was like beef stew or something in the gel. Oh, Yeah. yeah. Yeah, That's yeah. right. Although, you know, they made a Vegemite gel. I've had it. Really? Mm, yeah, bizarre. Could be not really less sweet, you know, than it should Yeah, be. but it needs to be the not too strong. It was kind of Vegemite with butter. Okay. That's kind of how it tasted. Uh, hydration pack or bottles? Normally I do bottles, Hmm. but we're going to try our hydration soon. Yeah, some races, if you do long ones, you kind of have to have hydration packs. So. But I still Yeah. prefer just bottles. Yeah, I don't same. like to have the extra weight on my body. Yeah, bottles. Mm. After the race or ride, beer, wine, or gin? Gin. After the race. I have to say first one is always beer. It's Mm. the hydration. <laughs> mm -hmm. We had uh, we were riding the Mundabidi Trail this weekend for Easter, which is our big gravel trail in WA, uh, Valtteri, a thousand k's long, um, and that was the first thing on our list. As soon as we finished, it was straight to the pub, straight Nice. to the pub for beers. Perfect Uh, idea. grizzle or grail? Grail. Grail, more The, racing. the, the new grail. The new one, right? Mm, they are, yeah, they're really nice, and. If you could, this is one person each. In if you could pick one person in the world to join you on a gravel ride, who would it be? If it's not Valtteri, then... Yeah, it's not. You can't pick each other. <laughs> Lee <laughs> Lagnan. oh, nice. Okay. I would go for Van de Poel. That's a good. You haven't ridden together yet. No, not yet. They were trying to do something, but schedules didn't Yeah. work out. Oh, that But I'd would probably be a good try night. and try and be on his wheel for the whole ride. <laughs> I can only imagine the scheduling. Whoever's organising that, that would be crazy. Uh, yeah, good answer, though. And, um, yeah, that would be pretty cool. Okay, well, Tiff, your next race, is it, is it Roubaix next Sunday? Good Lord. And then you're in Japan. Yeah, I'm in You. Japan. I'm traveling tomorrow, actually. So. Okay, all right. Well, Legends, thank you so much for joining me. That's all I got for today. It was um, great to talk with you both, and hopefully we'll see you next time in Adelaide. And, Tiff, will you be – are you coming back to seven or not this year? Unfortunately not. We decided just with all the travel schedules, yeah, Yeah, we'll skip yeah, this yeah. year. Great event. Really loved it. Um, Mm, okay. yeah, hopefully another year. And I see they're now doing one or looking at Asia, right? They did a Yes, test that's event. right. Um, Looks pretty cool. Yeah, Actually, Vietnam. Vietnam, yeah, Vietnam. So it could be interesting. Yeah, Yeah, for sure. great. All right, Valtteri, Tiff, thanks so much. It was really nice and um, appreciate your time. No, Thank thank you. you. All right, legends, that's another episode of the Press Room Podcast. Done and dusted. I hope you enjoyed this one with Valtteri and Tiff, two legends, Tiffany machine at Paris-Roubaix last week, finishing inside that top 30. And Valtteri, well, he just keeps on, keeps on keeping on at the Stake F1 team. Really good to have them. Can't wait to see them again next year at Rattle. Make sure you sign up for Finland Gravel if you're in Europe and you want a taste of some of the best European gravel there is. And keep your calendars free in January, legends. Okay, when you come to TDU, bring your gravel bike because Rattle Gravel is amazing. And that's it. Thanks for listening, guys, and I'll see you for 102.